were almost mathematical concepts, right? And to see where they would lead. The first mathematical or notation um, that he created was that of alpha function. Right? Alpha being the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And him choosing alpha function precisely in order to not get into the kind of trouble that you were noting he got and that claim got when they said envy. Right? Alpha didn't have any penumbra of any association to anything except to the Greek alphabet. But other than that, it was like an algebraic term, let's say, right? A squared, an algebraic term. It doesn't mean, it doesn't give us a notion of what the A is. We just have to see if that factor, right, how it functions, or that function, what does it do? Now, alpha function is a function of the personality. And what does it do? If it is a function, it does something. If it is a factor, it doesn't. Factors don't do things, but they make, may cause functions to occur. But as a factor, it's just there. It's something that is there in the background, right? Let's say, um, for instance, if you say A plus B, A is a factor, uh, A plus B equals C, that would be an equation, right? Mm -hmm. You would say A is a factor, B is a factor, C is a factor. Mm -hmm. Now, the adding A plus B, that's a function. Mm -hmm. That means that A can be added to B if you put them together in the function of summing their up, or multiplying them, if you wish, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, C is the outcome of the function of adding these two factors, A plus B, with the function of adding or multiplying them, give a result. And the function gives always a result, right? Something happens with factors in the personality, and the functions make something happen. Alpha function make something happen. What does alpha function make happen? Digest beta elements. Well, Turns he will le then elements. call that beta elements. You're right. But before we call the beta elements beta elements, what are they so that we can define them? And then say, and this VM will call beta elements short as a shorthand, right? Yeah. So when you say that alpha function digests raw emotional experience, raw sensation. emotional experience, and the raw emotional experience come from the inside, right? right? Mm -hmm. From the inside of the cell. Mm -hmm. And what else? Only sensory apparatus. So if it is related to the sensory apparatus, what else does it have to digest? What does the sensory apparatus capture? S senses. I mean, that raw... A stimuli from the outside. Say it again? Stimulation stimuli. From outside. Stimuli. Stimuli, right? The, the baby uh, sees the breast, for instance. That's a visual stimuli, or smells the breast. That's a refractory stimuli. But in order for um, the, the nipple or the breast to acquire some meaning for the baby, other than it just being a luminous or an odoriferous stimuli, something else needs to happen. Right? And, and that is what you were talking of when you said alpha function digests beta elements, and beta elements are either raw emotional experiences that's from the inside or stimuli, raw stimuli coming from the outside and you say digest, what you mean it's a function of the personality by which something in principle heterogeneous to the personality like the stimuli coming from the inside called raw emotions, or the stimuli coming from the outside, raw stimuli, acquire meaning. 
Before that, they are meaningless. They are just raw stimuli that don't mean anything other than at a body level, right? I mean, you see light and your pupils contract. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't say anything about whether the light means anything to you. It could be without any meaning. I mean, you, you could be um, in a vegetative state and still your pupils can dilate and contract. It doesn't mean that your eyes are understanding what is being put in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. That making of meaning is alpha function. That is what alpha function does. Mm -hmm. It transforms raw stimuli or raw emotions into the first um, building blocks of meaning so that they acquire a status that allows the personality to put them together. Right? When we say put one and one together, right? When we say don't you get it, just put one and one together, what we mean is just put two beta elements together, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. If this is meaningful and this is meaningful and you put them together, you will obtain a meaning. You will see what I mean, right? At a certain point when the baby can put together the appearance of the breast with the face of the mother and the arms of the mother, it is putting together a meaning that the breast means mummy because mummy brings the breast or has the breast. Now you put that together and you have a meaning. Now the breast is no longer a visual stimuli only, or the mother is not a visual stimuli only, it's now mother, as we understand the concept of mother. It's that object that loves me, that comes to me, that sometimes is not there when I would like her to be there. Well, that is, it has a meaning. Okay, so so beta elements are transformed into meaning through alpha function, okay? Yes. And they are transformed, I mean, beta elements are transformed into alpha elements, right? Correct. Okay. So are the alpha elements part objects? Because what you're talking about in terms of the realization that the arms and the breasts and so forth is mother, that's going to be more a whole object. But it seems to me that before that happens, the beta elements are transformed into alpha, alpha elements, elements that are still part objects. Is it, is, you see what, what I'm getting at? Well, I hadn't thought of it, and I don't think that Bjorn said it, but it's plausible. You could think of, for as long as alpha elements are the smallest units mm -hmm. of meaning, mm -hmm. not stimuli now, of meaning, mm -hmm of meaning of stimuli, of course, it's not meaning in the air, it's meaning of stimuli, you could say that they are part objects, certainly. Okay. Yes. But I, I think uh, it's something you said um, is that they transform them, the beta elements, into elements that can then be put together. Yes. yes. The beta elements can't be put together to form meaning. Exactly. That's that's but the alpha elements is a kind of characteristic that then can come together to form meaning. Exactly. So I, don't, I don't even know if it's a part object. I think it's an element. Well, but an element capable of joining together with other elements to form. Even that first part object kind of. Yes, I, I think that's right too. You can understand. Bion, um, it doesn't saturate the concept. He doesn't say it's this, right? Mm -hmm. And when he called the alpha elements alpha elements and did not say part objects or did not say, did not give it any other word, it is precisely because he wanted to leave it open. That's why I say, when you said part object, I said it's plausible. Bion didn't say it. But if we want to fill with meaning that rather diffuse um, concept, we could say, well, one 
plausible meaning is part of object. And I'm sure that Bion would have been open to that, except he would ha have said probably, well, don't get stuck in that. It may be if this is one possible meaning, but don't saturate this concept. Keep using <coughs> it and see what you can do with it. Meltzer devoted most of his work to explore the clinical meaning. He, one of his books is Clinical Applications of Bion's Ideas. He took Bion's concept, like alpha element, beta element, alpha function, and many others, right, to see how he could make them work in clinical practice, something that Bion didn't do and didn't want to do. Bion said, these are the tools you use them and see what you can do with them, mm -hmm. right? The, um, the, the way that you describe it <coughs> strikes me as, as um, um, demanding a very delineated way of thinking, um, as if things are either, um, you know, if it's either an alpha or a beta, it's, it's as if, it is as if uh, an, an, an aspect of experience is one or the other, mm -hmm. but aren't things usually, especially clinically, quite murky? The you know the, the way in which something becomes clarified, the way something, the way a thought can be thought, the way a word can be attached, the way something can be symbolized, the way a, 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 a bit of something can or can't be attached to a bit of something else, doesn't seem to me to be able to fit very snugly with the kind of explanation that you offered. Not because I think you're right or wrong, but because how, how is it that, that life and relationships and thoughts and everything else can be so divided, you know, so neatly? Yes, I understand what you mean. Um, let, let us wait a bit. I mean, th they aren't in practice, but the reason why Bion wanted to um, give us a system of notation, the ultimate um, piece of it being the grid that we might talk about next time is because he wanted to have tools or to give us tools to try to make our work as precise as possible because it is so imprecise, uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? To see how can we make this how can we make a better reading or a better understanding or a better mapping of something that is very difficult to grasp, as difficult as intuitive knowledge or an intuitive perception, right? How do you, I mean, everybody can say, how is it that I can see something? But for instance, how is it that I can perceive love is much harder to say because we don't have an organ for the perception of love, but we have eyes and retinae for their perception of light, and yet it's indisputable that love can be perceived. The question is how, right? How can feelings be? The countertransference can be perceived in a session, but how? What is the organ that we have to perceive the countertransference? Well, Bion would say, and perhaps Freud would agree with that, it's our organ of consciousness, but now we aren't any wiser either, are we? Because <laughs> we say the, order, the organ of consciousness, and you tell me where that is, right? <laughs> and, and how, well, hard to say. So Bion wanted to really give us the, the uh, notation system so that you can say, at a given moment, these are alpha elements, these are beta elements. Now, when Bion said that alpha elements are fit to uh, be integrated, that is, to be put together in following particular rules, right? A poet would follow the rules of poetry, a writer the rules of grammar, a painter, the rules of art and of her style of art, a musician, the rules of his music, right? But they, there is a harmony in which, or a logic, if you like, a scientist would put them together in a scientific way, in which alpha elements can be put together and something is obtained, a piece of art, a piece of scientific thinking or scientific research, uh, um, 
an interesting poem, right? Something results in that. 